everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this month's episode of Pegasus. I am Dr. Brittany Moore Henderson, Community Outreach Veterinarian here at Mississippi State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. As we approach the new admission cycle, we are providing our students with a lot of different opportunities that we would like them to know about. So joining me this month to talk about our different programs, such as our research program, is two of our veterinary students that have been involved in our research. So first joining me is Charlie Mulligan, a second year veterinary student, as well as a dual DBM PhD student. Thank you for joining me today, Thanks Charlie. Thanks for having me. So first off, Charlie, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi originally, and I got a bachelor's and a master's from Mississippi College, which is a private college um, in Clinton, Mississippi. Then I worked for a few years, and then I applied, so I'm a bit of an alternative student, so I'm a little bit older than everybody else. Okay, so what drew you to the dual uh, DVM PhD program? So I had a master's and I was originally going to go to graduate school, or that's what I thought I wanted to do, but I really liked animals. So I applied, somebody asked me why I didn't apply and I was like, they're not gonna take me. So I applied when I found out y'all had a dual degree program um, and, I, and I got in and I was kind of amazed, but <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Okay, so what does your research focus on right now? I do more clinical research and so my research is in uh, immunosuppressive drugs in dogs, so treating dogs with autoimmune disorders. We look at what kind of drugs are effective and uh, dosages, what's the best way to treat them and that kind of thing. Okay, so you pretty much, when did you start the program? I started in the summer of 2015. And you started originally with your PhD before your DVM. Right, right? I so, did two years before. Okay, mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about that process because I know that students start at different times with yeah. the program. Um, some, they give you the option so you can start two years before your DVM. And then they give you, um, you get breaks. So I did the two years before and I did all my graduate coursework. So you're required to have like two stats classes, um, a couple of seminars and things like that. And then um, when you transition into your DVM, you kind of stop being in the lab. Sometimes some PA or some major professors will ask you to write some, but you don't go in and really do any lab work. Okay. And then the summer between your first and second year, you go back into the lab and do any kind of lab work that you need to do. And then um, you can do research um, rotations, basically. Okay. So kind of like a clinical rotation when you get into third year. Um, and it, it's like, a, I think, an eight or 12 week block where you can go in and, and do um, your research. And then if you haven't finished your uh, PhD by the time you finish your DVM, you can finish it. Um, they give you like an extra year of leeway at the end to finish writing, do defense and all that good stuff. So how long do you expect, uh, I guess, once you finish your DBM to finish your actual PhD? As well? I'm hoping <laughs> that I get done when I get done with my DBM, but okay. it just depends on writing um, what the data is doing. Most of my lab work is done, okay. um, but writing, getting papers published, you know, doing any of the little, when you publish a paper and they send it back and they're like, it's great and all, but we really want this, doing all that kind of thing and getting that done. So I'm hoping by the time I finish my DVM, but it might be another six months, you know, okay, just to so get everything finished and done. Okay. So. Um, so with you, I know this sounds like you stay busy pretty much. So I'm sure this summer you have also been doing some research. Mm -hmm. um, so how it does your schedule somewhat look throughout the year? Because like you said, I know that you have some free time to do some research, but most of the time once you start the DVM program, you're in class. Yes. But I'm sure you get pulled out sometimes. Oh yeah, you? like right now, Dr. Mackins, my major professor, and he's like, don't you wanna work on this paper? <laughs> so usually, um, yeah, so I, I'm in class right now. So we, second year just started July 16th, and then um, I am in class all day um, from eight, to five, give or take most days. And then if I have afternoons off, um, I will t try and block out about an hour here or there, um, at least a couple times a week to write and maybe process some data and send that to him. Okay. Um, but most of your major professors are not gonna ask you. Once you get into um, like classes and clinics, they do not ask you to um, do to that. Do at least like most of the clinical research professors won't do that at all. Okay. So. So you pretty somewhat a little bit flexible, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. 
So what would you say as far as your experience with this program uh, and pretty much after you're done, how would it benefit you? Um, I would say in terms of the PhD DVM mm -hmm. dual program, I would say it's a really good opportunity if you really want to do research and that's something that you're really excited about, but you don't want to give up the possibility to go work in clinics. Um, definitely it's something to pursue. The faculty here are really awesome and everybody's really understanding and so everybody's usually willing to work with you. Um, especially if you want to do something um, like academics or lab animal or anything like that, then I would definitely suggest getting a PhD with your DVM. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for Charlie. having me. Um, well, we're going to take a break and be back with more in just a moment. Yeah. Everyone remembers their favorite teddy bear the reassuring love of their first puppy. They comforted us and made us laugh. For children battling abusive situations or post-traumatic stress disorder, the memories aren't as pleasant. That's why at Mississippi State University, we're pioneering a robotic technology that brings healing to those exposed to traumatic situations. Known as Therabot, MSU's robotic beagle includes lifelike features that allow it to move in ways that are both natural and nurturing. Its ultimate goal? To bridge the gap between two types of effective therapy, using real animals and their plush counterparts for emotional assistance. At MSU, we're proud to be changing the game in therapeutic recovery, even prouder to be putting lives back together again. Flight. It's driven mankind's dreams for centuries. The ability to soar above the earth, to travel to faraway places, to connect distant points. Manned flights to the moon and space were once the stars for which we reached. Now, unmanned aircraft are the future. At Mississippi State University, our teams are developing unmatched unmanned aircraft systems for an array of critical applications. We're so good at it, the Federal Aviation Administration named MSU a center of excellence in the field, asking us to lead the team that's creating the operating regulations for unmanned aircraft systems worldwide. So essentially, we're writing the flight plan for an industry that is the future. Our work means better information, more opportunity, and limitless horizons for you. The sky really is the only limit. Imagine the flu as something children read about in history books. We are at Mississippi State University, where we ring true. Welcome back, everyone. Now joining me is Andrew Cox, a second year DVM student who's also a participant in our summer research program. Thank you for joining me today, Andrew. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so starting out, Andrew, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama. I did my undergrad here at Mississippi State in wildlife and fisheries pre-vet. Um, my path was a little bit unique. I was in ROTC for a couple years, so I commissioned as an officer in the Army. Uh, also got married, had two kids uh, <laughs> before flying to vet school, so a little bit of a different route, kind of crazy, but it's all been, uh, it's all been good been very blessed. I'm real happy to be here now. Okay. Um, so what uh, drew you to apply for the SRE program? So with me, again, a little bit unique, having a family. I was going to be here for the summer. Um, both my kids are young. and Me and my wife wanted to stay here in Starkville. So, and I also want to keep gaining experience. I was interested in research, so it really pre presented itself as the best opportunity for me. It was paid, I could get more experience, see what research is like. I didn't have a whole lot of experience in research, so it was a really good avenue for me to kind of explore that and see you know, the other side of veterinary medicine. Okay, so for those, these 12 weeks, because that's how long the SRE program lasts, Sorry. for those 12 weeks, what, um, what was your research on? So my research was with Dr. Henry Wan on influenza, and what we did was we took a influenza A virus, H6 strain, and we actually identified 11 different strains of H6, and we tested them against two receptor types, one being mammalian, one being avian, to see if it would infect 
um, avian species, poultry markets, and it could infect humans. Okay, so what would you say, like the importance of that research that you did this summer? So this, this research, um, in conjunction with a lot, a lot more that's going on in that lab, will be eventually used to help um, with different um, vaccination protocols and what's going on with influenza vaccines each year. Um, and it'll also go into kind of surveying North America for what strains of low path avian influenza viruses are most likely to become high path and affect poultry markets and as well as uh, health of the American people. Okay. So when would you be able to present this, um, this research uh, in the future, you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think um, that this, I'm heading out to Texas A&M next week to present out there and then maybe on research day here we'll present okay. it. Okay, that sounds good. So yeah. you're pretty much going to get your research out. So I'm sure that research program that you're talking about doing next week is going to be a part of the SRE program. It right? is, it is. So everybody around the country, all the different SRE programs from different universities come together um, at a different location each year. This year it's at Texas A&M um, and everybody presents what they've done. Okay, so you'll get that opportunity to do that. That's, yeah. all, that's awesome, actually. So what would you say with your experience from this program, what would you be taking away from it? Ooh, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, foremost, the, the experience with research. So not having much experience in veterinary research beforehand, now I have a really good exposure to not only how to conduct research, but what goes on into it too, grant writing, writing specific games papers, uh, abstracts, um, working with colleagues. So I think that's most of the program so yeah, you have pretty much been able to benefit quite a bit because you came in yes. thinking that you only just thinking about one mind thinking about only treating animals but not thinking about the research that's aspect. Right. but now yeah. you get a big picture yeah of that's right that's okay, right cool so last question why did you choose mississippi state Ooh, for vet school well <laughs> so like i said i did my undergrad here me and my wife met here after traveling a lot in the Army with two kids, we decided that if I was going to go back to school, we were going to move again, that we would go back home. So this is to me and my wife. She's from Nashville. I'm from Birmingham. But this is, this is where we had together. So it was, it was a no-brainer. It was to come to Mississippi State or stay in the Army and apply again in the following year. Well, I'm glad yeah. that you joined us, Andrew. So thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. And that concludes this month's uh, episode. If you have questions or suggestions about today's show, do not hesitate to contact me at brittany.henderson at msstate.edu. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you next time here on Pegasus.